Hey, you got Jamie here, aka Squirrel, and uh, I'm back with the second installment of my 2035 mock draft. Thanks for all the feedback on the first one, uh, the first video I put out, and uh, let's see if I can get through the picks a bit quicker this time. <clears throat> so yesterday, when I did this, I managed to do five picks in 30 minutes, which wasn't very fast, so I need to speed that up. Uh, but also, during the course of the day today, this league moves fast, and we have had three trades. We've had a trade between Pittsburgh and Buffalo, a trade between Pittsburgh, Jacksonville, a trade between New York and Minnesota. So let's quickly do the trades because they're all for first round considerations. <clears throat> let's quickly do the trades before we go back to the picks. So let's look at these three trades. Here we go. First one, we got Giants sending two second rounders to the Vikings. Let's have a look at the value on that trade quickly. Here we go. So if you look at this, Ignore where it says Washington sends and Washington receives because this is the trade value calculator I used when I was in the GML. I was Washington. But here we are. We got two. Let's put it like this, actually. <clears throat> we got two second round picks being traded for 22nd round pick in the first draft. Sorry, in the first round of the draft. So the second, 22nd pick traded for 33 and 53. So if you look at the relative value of those things, You've got here three different ways to think about it. One is the Jerry Johnson or Jimmy Johnson draft chart, which is the one that the game uses if you play single player, you will know. <clears throat> this is the Chase Stewart chart, which is a better approximation of what a smarter NFL front office uses. I did follow the NFL draft that just went, and this Chase Stewart uh, curve is probably a better representation well, it is certainly a def better representation of what an NFL team will do than the Jimmy Johnson chart. And then this thing, which is a tracker that I used <clears throat> when I was playing in the GML, just trying to get a sense for the probability of getting a starter from each side of the trade. So to give you an example of this, I think if you've got the 22nd pick in the draft, on average, if you draft about as well as I do, which uh, doesn't necessarily mean the same as, as somebody else, but if you've got my track record, you probably got an 80% chance of getting a starter with a 22nd pick. <clears throat> That's what this thing here is trying to say. Uh, meanwhile, if you pick with a 33rd pick, you've got a 73% chance of getting a starter. And with a 53rd pick, you've got a 64% chance. If you add those two sides of the trade up, this, this trade is trading an 80% chance of getting a starter for a 138% chance. So on the face of it, this looks like the best side of the trade, the Chase Stewart curve would agree, the JJ chart would agree. But hold on a minute, because this is just, just talking about the probability of getting a starter. It doesn't talk about the probability of getting a star. <clears throat> One of the things I think people don't look at enough in draft analysis, particularly in the NFL, because of the cap, you have to have a certain number of stars. You can't have too many because of the cap, but also you can't have too few. If you have too few, you just won't be very good. So I don't know about what uh, New York's uh, aim here is, but if you haven't got, say, five full-on star players on a the roster, then you probably want to make moves to get to five. Uh, that's certainly the way I thought about it. Um, and so maybe that's what's going on here. And if you're doing that, then I can totally understand this trade from this side of it. Get a first-round pick, much higher chance of getting a star. Uh, moving on to the next, next trade, here's the Pittsburgh-Buffalo trade. It literally happened in the last three-quarters of an hour. Uh, and here we got Pittsburgh sending a wide receiver fourth round pick and a future third to Buffalo for the 27th pick in the first round. <clears throat> so here we go, we've got that over here. So uh, we've got the 27th pick and that's in consideration for a four. I valued Rob's future pick as a 26th pick because I think he's a playoff team. I think that's right, isn't it? Um, so uh, not judging it as the middle of the round, which you might do if you don't know so much about the record. Uh, we're calling it a playoff pick. Uh, bottom of the round and then the receiver. So one thing you can just look at for this, if you're using the Chase Stewart numbers here, 13 plays 10, so that kind of implies that the receiver is being graded at, at being worth three to make this deal level. Uh, and that, that's equivalent, if you look on this, these are all the curves by the way, that's equivalent on the curve, three points is equivalent to a fifth round pick. So basically in this trade, it looks like Buffalo is, is on the Chase Stewart grid, it would be valuing the receiver as worth a fifth round, fifth round pick. <clears throat> on the JJ board it's a second round pick so the, the Chase Stewart chart much lower um, don't know how good that receiver is basically depends on the receiver um, 
kind of interesting. Then we got this mega trade. The mega trade's for the first round pick in the draft. And you've got all manner of considerations. What do you got? Five players, a first round pick, two threes, a future first and a future second. So let's put all that in here. I haven't got enough space. This is such a huge trade. What a great trade this is, by the way. Congratulations to the guys making this trade. This is super cool. Uh, yeah, more shenanigans from uh, from young Robert. Very impressive. Here's that first round pick. <clears throat> we got the 14, 70, 75, which is these two here. The first next year, which I valued as a 16th, because I don't think it's Rob's pick, somebody else's pick. I don't know if that's going to be a high or low pick. I don't know. Future second is Rob's pick, so I'll call that 26 again in the, in the round. So you do that on the Jimmy Johnson board, about parity, before you get to the players. The players... Token together, those five players are valued on the Jimmy Johnson chart as being equivalent to a third round pick, which, okay. And the Chase Stewart chart kind of breaks it, actually, because there's just so much consideration on this side of it. This has all got reversed and confused. Um, look, I, you can't assess trades for a, a one pick without looking at what's on the board in the situation. So maybe we should just uh, turn at that point back to the, away from the trades, Back to the mock because we've got now we've got Pittsburgh on the first, so I still think it's the first five. But let's just come away from let's just put these trades in, by the way. Oops, so I put the team needs in here, but I haven't put the trades in. So now we've got to just sorry, I, I should have done this before I started the video. But you've got you've got Jacksonville has now got 14, so that's there. <clears throat> There's Rob. There's Jacksonville. Uh, and that's the first rounders on that one. On this one, Buffalo now has this one. So where's Buffalo? Buffalo got, are they in this? Yeah, there's Buffalo. So Buffalo now have got this pick as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and here the Vikings have sent 22 to New York. Where's New York on this thing? Did they have a pick to start with? No, they didn't. All right, so all right, so that's that. Come back. So now we've got Pittsburgh on the clock with the first pick. Now, who's, who's Rob going to take? I don't know. I don't know much about his roster. I'm not going to start guessing. Um, I still think these three are the clear first three. This quarterback, this receiver, this tight end, in whichever order they're taken. Um, but I'm just going to say Rob take. He's already got a million receivers because I've seen that in the past. So that narrows it down to the quarterback or the tight end. This, um, these, these guys are elite prospect, this receiver and this tight end, but they're old. Um, if you've already got receivers, there's no point in adding an older receiver. So I don't think Rob's going to do that. He's either going to do a tight end or a, or a quarterback. I, I mean, literally toss a coin. I'm going to say, uh, and I did see in a, for, in a forum note, he said that the tight end, I couldn't tell if he was being serious or kidding. I'm going with the tight end for Rob. Okay, now Carolina second. So now... Have we got anything on the needs for these guys? Yeah. So one of the GMs in this league, and I'm, I, I promised I would, I would not say which one, sent me some needs. So we got some needs. So as we go through now, a bit of an improvement against the last video. We got the needs. So tight end and linebacker. Okay, so that probably explains, maybe that partly explains um, the huge big trade up from Rob because now there isn't a tight end on the board for these people. Oh, well. Um, uh, and does anyone need a quarterback? Uh, don't know. All right, well, I don't know. So let's just say that Carolina takes the receiver because they can get the tight end. That means the quarterback is there at three. Someone should trade up and get that quarterback if Rob doesn't take him. If uh, if three, and by the way, Saw, sorry, Saw, I said you were Denver yesterday, you're, you're LA. Sorry, I didn't realize that. Hey, Saw, um, there's a quarterback there, could well be there for you. Um, third pick in this draft is probably the best value pick in this draft because there are three elite players on the board, according to me. Uh, Denver, what did Denver need? Do we know anything about that? We do. Let's just put that up here. Uh, Denver need a running back. They need a tight end and they need a safety, apparently. And um, there is a really good running back on the board, but as I said yesterday, if there's a receiver, I think you take them. So there's the receiver and the tackle. So we've still got the first five picks on the board exactly the same as yesterday. And now we can take all the drafted players off the board and have a look at the board. And here we are with the sixth pick of the draft 
and Detroit need running backs, linebackers, and D-backs, but we also need to just be considerate of the quality of the players on the board. Which elite players are left on the board, according to me? There is an elite safety, this guy called Vincent Woods. So that's the guy we would consider for Detroit here. And there is a big, there are big time running, there's a big time running back on the board here. Um, this guy, Palazzo. Has Palazzo got, what's his whole rank? Whole rank is the thing for a running back. Okay, it's Max, and what's the endurance? It's close to Max. So this guy, Palazzo, is a very good running back prospect. And then we had the, let's just look at the defensive backs for a second. What do we think we've got? We literally got this one guy called Woods. And Woods is uh, also a really good prospect. Um, and although with low zone defense, <coughs> which isn't great. And uh, oh, and low, but in fact, is that elite? My model doesn't care that much for individual bars on defense. It just doesn't. Um, it looks for a whole bunch of things. Um, and it thinks that this is a, yeah, I'm not, um, let's have a look at this guy and quickly grade him out. See if this is a guy that we think that Detroit would take 1970, 780. All right. So I said I'd get through his picks quick, more quickly. Let's see if I can actually do that. So here's the safety. The safety. That zone is so low, 26. Let's look at players that have got a zone of less than 36. Yeah, okay. It's, it's pretty unusual for them to be any good as prospects, but the ones that are, you know, they come through. Yeah, they come through, okay. <coughs> Still think there's a pretty decent chance this kind of player winner. Drop, let's talk what happens there, real zone, so the zone that actually emerges more than, yeah, okay, there we go, look, it's, um, it's bad, <laughs> it's not, there's a lot of zeros in there, it's bad, um, all right, so, uh, let's cut, Vincent Woods here is, is not really a high first round, let's put in this at 1.5, which means the middle of the first round pick, so that's, that's not who we think Detroit going to take, they're going to say, don't do that. Why would we do that when we can take a guy like this guy, Wayne McCombs? He is a clearly elite prospect, 79 expected, proper linebacker one. Well, I would say don't take a middle linebacker <clears throat> this high in the draft, pretty much regardless of how, I mean, look, all these uh, bars are good, all of the endurance is pretty good. Um, don't do it. This is why I wouldn't do it. Um, Think about what you're trying to do if you've got the sixth pick in the draft. You're basically trying to win the bowl. Uh, you're not trying to get to eight and eight. If you get a lot of money and spend it on run defenders like this guy, and you fill your cap with people like this guy, your probability of going eight and eight will massively increase. Your probability of winning a bowl will reduce because you need the pass game to win the bowl. Uh, and if you spend a lot of money on the run game, then by default, you can't spend the money on the pass game. And you're probably better off just getting a bit worse. Instead of getting this guy going eight and eight, um, with a sixth round pick, sorry, with a sixth pick in the draft, if you can, you should probably try and do something a little bit more aggressive. So let's see if there's something more aggressive that we think we can do. Um, and again, let's just go back to the guys that we view as, and that's the wrong thing. Uh, okay, hold on a sec, sorry, I'm trying to do something. Don't do that. Okay, so, wow, there really isn't a lot here, is there? Let's increase this thing to second round, what I call second round picks. There's McCombs, <clears throat> two centers, a tackle. Oh, okay, this tackle, a uh, nice static. Uh, hmm. Okay. Let's start looking at the not so good wide receivers. So this guy's Fisher, 59, uh, projection, which could easily be a mid 50s receiver, right? This is not exciting stuff, but there's route running in this downfield. Is there enough endurance? <laughs> 40 is enough in my view. So let's have a look at this guy, Fisher. Let me get rid of that. Don't need that anymore, right. 
Okay, this isn't going to be. That exciting. Ah, okay. So look, two of these guys have popped with this guy Fisher's. So this is Fisher up here. This is Fisher's details. And two guys have popped that look like Fisher. Well, by pop, what I mean is this is their projected. Hang on, let's just do this. Projected max curve. And this is their actual. So this is the rating, right? This is the projected rating when the draft process happened for each of these players. And this is the actual. And with this guy, here's four comps. These are the four players in database closest uh, to this guy. <clears throat> they are all got some characteristics that tell you they're close. In fact, let's just do these ones. Okay, so of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players, two of them, this one, minus 11, and this one minus 19, their projections got nowhere near uh, being correct. The, the actual is far lower, 19 lower, 11 lower. But for these two, plus eight. If this guy goes plus eight, then he's a mid 60s receiver. His probability of going plus eight, just on these five comps is like half. No, it's maybe a bit less than half. <clears throat> but if you've got a half chance at a high 50s, low 60s receiver with route running and getting downfield, let's kind of look at what these pros, prospects ended up with. These prospects, some of them, here we go, they've all got usable numbers over here for downfield and route running. I mean, that, that's a first round pick for sure, this guy Fisher. Whether or not Detroit takes him or a different team is a, is a different point. He's young too, look, 2013, that's a, a young player and quite well developed for the youth. So that's an interesting one. Um, absolutely not, not a sure thing, not by any stretch. But if you're going to do something aggressive to try and catch up with the playoff teams in this league, uh, I, would, I would far, far sooner pick Fisher uh, than pick an inside linebacker, even if the inside linebacker is looking like going to be 70 rated. Having said that, what's the pass rush on the Lions record? Okay, this pass rush, so this is probably a top 10 pick as well, so let's just grade that out while we're here. <clears throat> Powell is a center, let's just grade a few of these guys so that we can make it easy to get through some picks quicker. Powell is a center, he's got 40 solar system, which translates to intelligence, which isn't great. He's young. Um, some busts there too. There's not the world's safest pick, uh, this guy. <clears throat> oh, no run blocking too. That's not, that's a low, that's probably a second round pick actually. I, I, I wouldn't take power in the first round. Uh, we have a 78 over here. It's probably a low first round pick. Let's put him as a 1.9. Um, so almost a two second round pick. Elliot, 19, 2, 9, 3. Okay, looks in the face of it like a better player. High run block, still not full. That's full. Where's the endurance? Yeah, it's good enough. Okay, that's a better player. That is a bottom of the first round pick as well, really, ideally. So that's quite a uh, Campos, young, not got the static, which will put a lot of people off. Let's see. This is the kind of guy you end up having to pick if you're a playoff team and you know, in many draft classes, you end up with a guy like this. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, the full run block. It, the, the pass block's not very good, so that's a guard, not a tackle. What's the size? 390, yeah, it's probably a guard. And then there's probably a position switch to do there. And let's just do static and see if that sort of changes the picture on that. Whoa, 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 look at that. 
there's the three closest they're not that close because they're not actually they're not that close at all let's be a bit more precise about this yeah okay let's look at players with a max run block that look like this because I think that's a better handle on what's going on so that's a higher than 73 yeah okay not quite as scary as first look still I'm not rushing to draft that kind of guy at all oh, that's a second round grade for me even with this. actually no not that's for a tackle valuable position would I rather take Campos than Ellie and than this guy no about the same same grade okay that's what we got um Serger is the one that my model likes more 19348 Immediately, oh, that's the wrong thing. Well, not immediately obvious. Why? Uh, whoa. Okay, that's not very promising either. So, guys, like this. That's a max bar. Looks good. Let's try the max bar. Okay, so this is just a guy with a huge amount of variance. You can't be sure what you're getting with a guy like this. All these over 70 something run block bars look really good. And then, so 80, 70 for run and pass block. And then the reality of the guys is all over the place. Absolutely all over the place. You don't know what you're getting with this guy. And his pass blocking might not be adequate to even play. That's not a first round pick either. That's a second round pick. Even with a 60 odd number here. Um, so really there's a lot going on here. So that's stretching down the board a little bit. Um, we'll come back to these guys as we get to them in the draft. Let's go back to the top of the board. So why would Detroit, I know I said I'd do this quickly and I've been uh, <laughs> 20 minutes on no picks. All right, this isn't going as fast I hope, but let's speed up. Let's try this guy, Delgado. Why wouldn't they pick this guy, Delgado? Highest guy on the left on the board. Sorry, McCombs doing first. High, highest guy left on the board. Why wouldn't they take McCombs? Because he's an inside linebacker. Why wouldn't they take Delgado? Because he's an inside linebacker with no static. Why wouldn't they take Powell? He's not good enough. He's a, he's, he's a low first round pick. Klingon Smith. Yeah, the static's not there either. Um... And again, another relatively small linebacker. 250, 265, they can do pass rushing. Smaller, no. Hickman, why don't we like Hickman? Hickman, they need a defensive back. Let's look at Hickman. Okay, so let's have another look at this. Oops. Let's find a reason to take this guy. Now, the combine is a problem. So let's just find players with the same combine. There are not many, and there are definitely none, anything like as good as Hickman. Okay, let's broaden this out a bit. Still none, anywhere near as good as Hickman. This guy is a very unusual prospect again. I had a guy a bit like this when I did this yesterday. Super, super, super unusual. Um, uh, okay, keep building this up. Okay, so this guy is 60s, wasn't as good as 60s, partly because this position combine was poor. This guy's got a five. I've literally got no idea what that's going to do, but I imagine it's going to be bad. Uh, if we just sort of come out and just simply say, what happens if you're a safety and you've got a, one of these of five, and please give me the best safeties ever that have been like that. And one of them was a starter. That's a usable starter. And then the rest of them just bust out. But the trouble is bad prospects are always overvalued by the prospect process. Um, I won't bore you with the mass of that, but that doesn't really tell you anything. Let's try 10 or 15. Let's see if that happens. Okay, here's a guy, 15. Yeah, 10, all right. 
this this guy might work. I mean, uh, not a, I wouldn't be using a high first round pick on this guy at all, but I'd probably be using a low one. So let's do him 1.9. But they, they can't take the guy with that. This is a tackle with low intelligence. Don't take people like this high in the first round. Take them in probably the third round, actually, by my grade. Um, I'd, I'd far sooner have a 50 rated or 45 rated tackle high intelligence than this player, uh, regardless of what the bars are. There's that center, the guard with borderline intelligence again. Um, that's not the guy you're gonna take here. Van Bernard, and they're okay. We're kind of running out of ideas. There's the there's the running back. There's the running back. Um, I, I I think I'm about as inclined to take the running back as I would be to take the. Actually, no, I'd rather take this linebacker than the running back. Um, if it were me, uh, there's not a lot of really compelling options here for these guys at all. Uh, this is not a pick that I'd feel very pleased about having to make. I would love to trade this pick down if I had the sixth pick in this draft. I don't think there's a lot of value here. I really don't see a player here that, that gives you value commensurate with the sixth pick in the draft at all. And this is why this is quite a difficult pick. Um, but we are, I think we're looking... mainly at three players, Fisher, Woods, and McCombs. That would be my view. And I think I would probably take Fisher. Um, that doesn't mean I know what Detroit will do. Uh, I'd take Fisher over Woods. Oh, I'd take Fisher. I'm gonna take Fisher here. Um, it's probably more of a me pick than anyone else. But there we go, with the sixth pick in the draft, there's Fisher. And here's Denver, and they need a running back or a tight end or a safety. Well, if they need a safety, then let's just go with Woods. Even though I think this is a big overdraft, there is literally not the next best defensive back in the draft, according to my scouts anyway, or Rob's scouts, and my analysis is... Okay, there are a few interesting... Oh, that guy's got a static. What about this guy, Downs? Let's have a look at this guy. 19, 7, 6, 3. Okay, this is a promising safety, actually. This looks okay. So, endurance is there. The static's fairly low. There's a, there's a problem there. Um, but these guys have all got the same problem and turned out just okay. That's a first round pick, I think. Probably a middle of the first round pick. I'd rather have Woods, I think. Uh, but not by much. There's not really much in there at all. Um, so, back to this. Let's say one of the safeties here. And even though it's a, a bit of an overdraft, really, and I uh, wouldn't feel that happy doing it if I was making the pick, but let's go with them. But I have a, uh, with the seventh pick, this guy, Vincent Woods. So there we go. So that's the seventh pick. Uh, starting to speed up now on the picks, good. And now we've got Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay needs someone on offense, including a quarterback. And so that's going to rule out all these linebackers and all this stuff. And we're going to say, don't do any of that. Let's take out the drafted players. Don't do that. Just let's stick with who's left on the board. Someone on offense. Okay, so that includes a quarterback. There isn't a quarterback left that I think you would take. Strongly consider if you've got this eighth pick and someone will give you a decent starting quarterback um, for the eighth pick. Maybe do a player for pick trade here, in my, my view. Uh, but failing that, uh, let's go back to the board and see what we've got. I'm going to take some of these grades off. So the guys with no... Uh, I'll do that later. So we've got <clears throat> we've got this guy Peralta too. We haven't missed a look at him. He's got a seventy three. He's an offensive player. Let's try him. One nine one four three. Okay. 
again, this guy's got a weird combine set, including a five. So let's see what happens if you've got a five in your tight end. Uh, you can be a starter, but you're probably not very good. Like you're really probably not very good. Like, like really, really. Oh, this one. That looks quite promising. Okay, well, let's see what's this guy got for a static. He's yeah, got a static. Okay, if you're really okay, this is my view on on drafting at the end of the draft. Where and I haven't looked at the records here, but I'm I'm assuming that if you're drafting this far up the board and you have got team needs which run basically across the entire offense. Look, if you're sitting here with this pick, if you can deal it down and get multiple picks, fine. If you can get a player that is a offensive player at a high value position, you should try to do that. I don't think you should try to do anything else. I don't think you should look at these linebackers, even though they're good prospects, they'll be really good players and the rest of it, some of them will be. It doesn't matter because if you get them, it won't make your team much better. And if anything, it reduces your chance of being able to stay at the top of the draft, get a big time wide receiver, big time quarterback, big time tight end, and make a bowl run. So I think actually in that context, this guy Peralta is probably a good guy to take because it, there's a very high probability this just straight up flames out. Um, but if it doesn't, you get a tight end. And if it does, then you're going to be at the top end of the draft next season anyway and you'll get a wide receiver, which is much better than getting some linebacker who helps you get to 8-8 eight and, eight and no further. So I'm going to say for Tampa Bay here, go for Dylan Peralta, tight end. That would be, um, I, that's, a, that's a bold pick to make, <clears throat> but I think it's a good calculated risk to take, even if I think, and I do think, this is a player that has a really high probability of busting, like super high. Um, and it's got a lot of a lot of reasons to not you know that combine is a real reason not to touch the player, um, not least with a with a eighth pick in the draft. But still, that's what I would do. Next one, Cleveland. Cleveland now. Cleveland is in the same boat as Tampa Bay. They need players across the offense. And here, I think this is where I would look down this board and I would reach for this running back. Now, I wouldn't take the running back as a running back. This running back, I would take as a player who could convert to receiver. Uh, and because Cleveland needs a receiver, and okay, a running back too, but you can get running back in the fifth round, but you could get the running back um, and try to convert to receiver. You get a little screen that says, this player can convert with you know 80% of the ratings or whatever. If that happens with this, this running back, that would be one of the good value picks in this draft. There are not that many <clears throat> players that I would rather have than, than that option to do that. And, you know, maybe maybe this is something that, that the team before Tampa Bay probably do, should, could do instead of Cleveland. In fact, um, no, let's stick with Cleveland doing it. So the, here's Platt. So let's just have a look. And we're 19 0 and 5 0. Um, okay, so here's Platt. So Platt is going to be good, uh, I think. Ooh. That's not this. Uh, there's lots of um, the whole rack is 84, which is really good. Breakaway speed is is a max, which is really good. You want at least one of these statics for the running back to be high, and once you've got that, you are well away. This guy's got lots of them. I actually don't want to spend. But, yeah, let's just do this. If you have if you have two max static as a running back and then you've got high hole rep like these two guys, then you're going to be good. So, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. So you, your probability of this player being bad is super low. And then the probability, but, but what does good and bad mean? If it's a really, really good running back and you've got a really, really good offensive line, but you've got no wide receivers, no tight ends or pad quarterback, all you're going to do is run the ball well and you're going to come eight and eight. You're not going to win the bowl doing that. You won't beat the top guys of the playoff teams in this league doing that. You know it. They know it. So don't spend too much time worrying about which running back you get. <clears throat> but this guy's got max route running. And he's weighing in at 209. So yeah, maybe nine's too low, actually, because that capability to 
um, switch to receiver is valuable and uh, you've got a 58 development on on the on, on a 2012 draft year this player probability of busting is pretty low and probability of being really good is is high and even surviving the position switch as a 60 plus receiver that is a good probability uh, and it's probably one that I would go with actually that's that's a uh, that's pretty good all right now we're down to the 10th pick 10th pick Indianapolis they like a running back they've just seen one go off the board but that's fine because they can take another running back about 100 more picks from now and they'll still be fine uh, they want O-line or they want depth in the front seven. So we don't pick depth on defense with a 10th pick in the draft. Uh, but we do look for O-line. So let's, let's find O-line help because there are some O-line guys up here. And we probably do one of those at this point. Uh, not that uh, guard that I didn't like. But who did I actually like? He hasn't been drafted yet. Um, I quite liked... Uh, there was Elliot and there was Campos. And I guess... Um, I, I don't know which they really prefer, but I've got Elliot and Campos about the same. I've not got them as high picks either. I've got them as pretty low ones. Um, on the basis that one of them is a tackle and has a bit of a chance of being a tackle, maybe I'd say go with that. Uh, you might just let me just spend a minute. Why not Willis? Willis hasn't got the intelligence third round pick. Why not Cooley? Um, yeah, why not? 35. My cutoff's normally 40 on this. Um, so that's why not on Cooley. But then if we're saying that Powell's all right and he's a 40 and, and you know, Campos 80, much higher probability of this guy being good, uh, even though there's also a higher probability of the guy being absolutely rubbish and useless, even with the max combine here, the dash. But we're going to go with Campos for Indianapolis. Right, Detroit linebacker right now I think we've got to 11th pick in the draft we're kind of far enough down that, that you can say okay if you're a team that wants to get better on defense and you care about that quite a lot more than I do then you might go with these linebackers at the top of the draft and this guy McCombs 19 617 he actually looks good um, as I say I think it's it can be dangerous to be too good in some of these less valuable positions because you're just using up loads and loads of cap on players that don't make that much contribution to your probability of winning a bowl but all right the guy's gonna have massive ratings and um you know it's like across the board endurance isn't perfect but the rest of it looks great and you know mccombs is going to be good so you know i think there's a risk of being too good that position but still going to get drafted high so there's 11 that's detroit's pick mccombs um okay now we're down onto 12th picks so of baltimore baltimore Apparently the needs here, quarterback, wide receiver, tackle, linebacker, um, wide receiver too. Did we take that receiver off the ball? Where was that receiver? Did we still got that one um, that I quite efficient over. We took Fisher off the ball higher up. Oh, there's Pasco. We looked at Pasco yesterday. Pasco was a sort of all right looking receiver. Uh, and let's go there for Baltimore. So that's, that's that. Then Washington, they've just seen the receiver go off the board. They've got an aging quarterback, apparently, and then they like defensive tackles. Tackle, I think tackle's probably the biggest divergence between this game and the NFL in terms of how important the position is. I have managed to get to bowl games with street-free agent defensive tackles. I tend to use it as a position where you can look for cheap cohesion as opposed to anything else. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'm right. And there's a lot of people that think it's really, really important. This guy is the... Um, tackle prospect let's have a little look at the defensive tackle prospects that the game the model I have thinks are there we've got two uh, this guy Patton this guy Cooper you see they're both badges as, as, as ends so three four ends um, that would be a kind of four three tackle with a bit of precision there's 290 bit bit light maybe but, but, but uh, with the ability to bulk up and do um, tackle this one's got way better combines than this one and then looking over at strength which is important this one's got better strength so one it's quite interesting and then they've both got a bit of pass rush and this one's got the endurance so they both look okay um, they don't look 13th pick in the draft okay but let's just run them both through 19 5 and 5 so but this is a this is a Again, this is a weak class, 
and you kind of have to take what you get, you're getting in a class like this. Okay, that's not great. And I'm struggling to get excited by the prospect of taking this guy, even if my model says this is a higher, what the model's trying to get you to do is buy, is take players with a sort of higher product, probability of working out this guy if you look like this guy your busting frequency looks sort of you know a bit lower even though it all looks pretty unexciting that's a lot you know low first round pick it's not that exciting divine um 19478 this is the one with the better static and the statics can matter at this position quite a lot problem with you kind of going against the grain if you if you pick an end to try and get a tackle you're kind of doing it the wrong way around you, you, you want to be trying to unlock value by starting with a, t with a t um, tackle less value position make them an end happens sometimes probably the other one like that is when you sell and that's a linebacker make them an end that's a good one yeah, look, here we go. Here's a guy who popped who looks like this guy. So the, the model thinks if you do something like this, you might get a pop. But again, you don't get that much player either. So I think as both bottom of the first round kind of guys and not someone I would take. Um, if we go back to the top of this board and we say, I want a receiver, we looked at, we looked at Rayburn. He is second round pick we looked at Donnelly these guys got no endurance what about this guy he's got no static what about this guy no see these guys have all got obvious flaws uh, all the way this guy is going to be rated in the 40s so I don't think even for just straight up darts there's wide receivers anymore that people want to take even if they desperately need them that's why that's why it makes sense to take higher receivers with any kind of probability of being good because uh, they should go quick and they do go quick. Uh, so I think you've got to disregard the needs here. Tackle, there's not anything worth drafting for value here. Receiver, the same. And maybe just sort of stock up on whatever you think you can get. So, um, yeah, it's just, it, I think this is where you kind of just take a gulp and pick a, a lineman or something. So we've got a moderately interesting linebacker. We've got actually to take the drafted players off the board. It's confusing. Moderately interesting linebacker. We've got a moderately interesting center. We've got a moderately interesting linebacker again. We've got a couple of players that we think is sort of, Hickman's a sort of debatable safety. You've got this guy tackle we don't want to take. It's not clever and he can't, he's going to give loads of penalties. I think you just take you just take one of the linemen here, I think. You just take whichever one of those two you can get most comfortable with. Um, otherwise you're reaching down to pick up this tackle. So it's this tackle, I think between for for, for the Washington team here is between this tackle for me, who it says is an end but he's not as a tackle pattern. Um, and then one of these two linemen, Powell or Elliot. So I'm going to go with Powell here, which takes him off the board. 13. That moves us on to Jacksonville. Jacksonville need everybody, apparently. Uh, and so they need somebody to f start getting... Um, they're basically looking for the... When we talk about best available player, I think best available player, what it means is hardest to replace. So how do you replace a pretty good outside linebacker? Well, they come up in free agency quite often because they're often the first person to... If you've got a cap-constrained team, they'll be the first guy they don't pick up. You can get these guys in free agency. You can't get... You can get a safety. You can't get a tackle in free agency because a team with a good one doesn't let them go. Um, you can't you can't even really get a center uh, in free agency in most leagues you definitely can't get a receiver um hardest to replace positions are probably the o-line defensive backs obviously quarterback and receiver and tight end so i think even though it kind of seems a bit weird 
I probably would take one of these uh, O-linemen here if I was Jacksonville, just because it's hard to replace. Uh, you also actually, <clears throat> this is what I do actually think about it. I would take a young player because you're going to be, you are going to be bad for a while if you had the first pick and you've just traded down for a million more picks. So you might as well start looking to build a foundation and really you want to buy, you want to get players in who might be able to have cohesion in three or four years time and then loads and loads of cohesion in seven or eight seasons time. So actually what I would do here, this guy Clemens is a 2013 player. He's going to have super high cohesion. He might not be that good. Is he only slight problem? <laughs> let's have a look. But let's go young. If we're if we're if we're Jacksonville here, let's go young. And let's try this guy Clemens. Is Clemens any good? Boom or bust pick might go wrong. My, oh, no static. Minimum static, it happens. Oh, and there's no run blocking either. This is a pass blocking. No, you can't take this guy. Not this high up. Let's just grade him out anyway. So 26. So players with basically no static. Um, yeah, they can be pretty good. They don't let the zero static fool you too much. Uh, the game doesn't mind it too much. Too much, too much. And then if they've got a maximum pass block, See, look, you can have a guy like this guy who you know, was like that and turned out to be really excellent. And uh, yeah, so this is this is an example. This guy about like a bit like Clemens, you know, same kind of idea. And projected like this. And then when you actually looked at the bars, there was a max bar for pass block a minimum bar for static, but then a sort of middling run block bar. And what happened to the run block bar? It, I'm sorry, there's endurance too, which is 80 odd. And then the run block bar turned out to be pretty good. It was all a con. And I found a few guys like that. And um, yeah, I didn't disregard these other ones. So, you know, that's not a completely nuts pick, but it's probably not a 14th pick in the draft. Let's do one point for this guy. Is there any other young player not yet drafted? So let's limit this to the young ones for Jacksonville. We got the linebackers, not the best place to rebuild, and I keep saying it. You've got the, don't really want to draft these guys, they've all got their flaws. <coughs> uh, what about this guy, Amber? No, not a good enough pass rusher. Um, center with poor pass blocking. No, that's a, that's a second round pick. That would come back to that's. Would you would you be okay with this guy to sell? No, there's not enough there. No, that's not first round pick. Neither is that. Because uh, they're just not what the intelligence, even if they've got everything else. It's just going to be loads and loads of penalties. Although this guy's got a max run block bar. No, maybe that's a pick actually. 19353. Players like this consistently come in sort of about 15 below their projection. So this guy's a low, a low 60s guard, not a mid 70s one. And the pass block just might not be good enough. Just might not be good enough. So, and there's not enough intelligence. So again, even though some of the bars look great, some of them don't. So that's a low first round pick. I mean, some of these, are, these guys are going to go in relation to the first round but they're not going to be a high first round pick. Then you've got another inside linebacker. You've got this guy, Amber, who is well developed for uh, for the age, actually, um, with the weak side. Pretty similar to this guy, Klingensmith. They look fairly similar. Um, and then you've got this other guy, Delgado. They'll probably go somewhere, and, uh, but 
but not too soon. Uh, you've got a tackle here, which my model doesn't like. Probably endurance. Let's have a look. I know the endurance is there. Uh, could just be run, run defense. You kind of expect your tackle to be able to do run defense, but doesn't doesn't matter that much for Kai if you can pass rush, which this one can. That's quite an interesting profile. I'll often come back to with the max combines. Uh, that's an interesting player. It's an unusual kind of player. Um, then you've got these guys and they're a little bit less. Okay, so so we're just looking at the young, young players here and seeing if there's one that Jacksonville could think, yeah, we're going to get this player for a rebuild. And the only one, even though it kind of doesn't immediately jump out at you, that, that I would get comfortable taking, this guy Clemens, he's young. He might be good, he might not be. Uh, <coughs> so we're going to go there for Jacksonville. So there we go. Chicago needs star power on the board next. So let's just look at the top of the board and maybe um, just bring in a player. If they really need a player that's just a high-rated player, um, then maybe they can take one of these players from in the linebacker positions that you think, well, it's just a high rating. I'm not sure it does much, but if, you, if your roster hasn't got high rating guys on it, you just want to get one. Um, I don't know if that's what, what Chicago is. I don't really know. Uh, but if they're looking for a star player somewhere, then maybe they'll try one of these two linebackers up here. Let's go. Let's take one of these off the board here. We've got Delgado and Klinger Smith. Uh, Klinger Smith's got a higher percent dev here. Um, they've both got weak statics, which is which is a problem actually. But they're not weak, weak. They're not like a real problem. This one's got amazing combines. This one's got good combines and the big dev thing. I don't know that much about drafting linebackers. I think it's a hard one. Um, this one's got more statics, and this one's got fewer statics and more everything else. Literally toss a coin between these two. I've got absolutely no idea which one of those two is a better draft pick at all. I do not know. Let's go with Delgado for Chicago, number 50. <coughs> okay, Tennessee needs a safety. Uh, have we still got one of those guys on the board that we had when we looked at the safeties? We're still there. There's Hickman and Downs, and they haven't been taken yet. Uh, and I said middle of the second round, uh, middle of the first round for Downs. So there you go, for Tennessee. We go with Downs, excellent. Um, and now Buffalo, who've just missed out and they want a corner. We haven't really looked at corners yet in this in this draft. Let's just check out my guys that I think are real first round picks. Have they all gone now? Uh, yeah, they've gone, gone now. And except for Serda, who I concluded I didn't like and thought was a second round. This guy's got a low. So not, not they're all gone. And then let's just look at the, the model's second round grades. It's a bit of is it this model's pretty uh, aggressive and being negative, it likes receivers. Uh and then we've got the couple of guys that it thinks they're detackled. So not really got massive amounts of um there's definitely not a lot here that meets the needs, and the only real player left that, that's on this board is the centre, and we're not that excited by him either. Let's have a look at the cornerbacks in this class, haven't done that yet. Let's see if there's anything here. So there's Ethan McCarthy. So he's the number one cornerback in this class. And actually, my model doesn't like him, but the historic comps like him. So maybe he is one. Let's have a look at him. He's <laughs> a polarizing prospect. Oh, he's got no endurance, that's why. So I don't take guys like this. Um, again, like I said yesterday, guys with low endurance, you kind of have to be into game planning and all this stuff. I'm not into that at all. Um, guys like this bust, and guys like this boom. This is a polarizing prospect. This is the kind of guy you see in the NFL. People don't know what to make of the prospect. You've got no idea. I'm out because the guy's got low endurance. So if you've got less than about 26, Let's just show that. There's a bunch of guys with less than about 26 for endurance and their real endurance. This is their real career performance. Oh, look, you do get, they can pop. That's, that's interesting. I have never seen that before. That's really, hey, well, that's really interesting. Look at these two guys here. You've got one here and you've got one here and they've popped. So their endurance, let's look at this guy. His endurance, 23 as a prospect. 
and a 65 projection. And then when he came out, it wasn't 23, it was wrong. He was 71. And that's super interesting. And are there any parallels between this guy and this guy? I mean, maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. No obvious distinction. Do you know what? That's a risk I'm going to say Buffalo takes here. Um, I wouldn't take that risk. And if Buffalo are good at game planning, maybe this guy goes off the board. And he's young too, so... There's, there's Ethan McCarthy, despite the low endurance, which probably means this guy is a situational guy, only probably a nickel corner, but there is like a one in seven chance or something, maybe a one in five chance that you get a full on cornerback one who should have been drafted in the first five or six picks. So that's a risk. Here comes Carolina back on the board. They need a linebacker. Um, they've already got in the first pick of this draft or the second pick of this draft this guy Hicks who is a really good wide receiver and let's say they come away with this other linebacker we talked about Clinton Smith so that's Clinton Smith he goes there at 18 that brings Oakland onto the clock Oakland according to this need a running back need a tight end need a linebacker um, they probably won't find um, what is the next best running back in this draft Okay, so we've got this guy. He's not got a. He's got, not got maximum hole rep, and he's got, okay, static. This guy's got maximum hole rep. This guy's got maximum hole rep and a bit of static. Uh, not the endurance though. So there's not, yeah, okay. So there's not a, like another amazing running back prospect. We've already had one. It was super good, for a running back had the potential to convert to receiver. The the next few. I'm not really feeling it. I'd be looking down the draft. Let's just find a down the draft guy just to see if uh, anyone who's watching these videos gets a chance to pick someone uh, down the draft. So let's just do 80 max hole rep guy with, there's one static, nope. There's one, oh look, there you go. And there's one. So these both these guys, both these guys, what about endurance? Ah, oh, neither of them, damn it, damn it, I don't. I wouldn't draft the running back in this draft. Besides the one I've already taken, I would just leave it. Okay, so Oakland on the board here looking for a running back, tight end, or a linebacker. There aren't any uh, good ones left, so or first-round grade ones left. So you're kind of scratching around for whatever you can get here, and you have got this board that you're met with. You've got Hickman, who we kind of thought was a low first, Elliot, we kind of thought, was a low first. Cooley was a low first. Willis is a third, so we don't like that. In fact, let's just start getting rid of the guys that we don't like. Then we got... So there's three guys. We've got Hickman, Elliot, Cooley. We kind of looked at all of them. We thought they were all low first. We're not excited by any of them. Let's do Van Bernard, linebacker. They're saying they want a linebacker. Perfectly good linebacker, except for his agility combine. Let's set that to a, be a limiting factor. Oh, huh. oh. It is possible to be a good linebacker and have this combine, but it is super, super unlikely. Let's do the best ones ever. There's been one with a grade anything like Bernard's. He busted. There was another one that popped, but most of them, uh, you can't tell. You can't tell. This is another outlier guy. He's a super wide outlier. You don't know what you're getting. That is very, very odd as a combine. It is odd. If you if it's not, <laughs> and hey, look, if it if it was if it wasn't 30, if the 30 somehow misread this, it's like 90. Then all you're left with is a is an inside linebacker anyway, which is going to help you go eight and eight. The guys picking around sixteen here are the eight and eight people, and uh, you know this is I don't think it helps hugely, but this is exactly the kind of guy that you end up picking when there's nobody on the board that you like, and that's exactly what the the risk of that is here. I tell you what, let's just go here, even though it's not a. Let's just look at this guy Campbell. I've got him as situational, probably means he's got low endurance. 
Uh, low endurance, there we go. Situational, but this guy can rush, okay? This guy can rush big style um, by the looks of it. Max strength, max PR tech. This guy can rush. This is a one of the, this is a very interesting third down prospect. You probably don't want to play this player on first and second down, or at least if you hit Rex like I do, if you've got this guy on your roster, you kind of don't want it because if you hit Rex like I do, it will just start playing this guy all the time. It'll be tired. It, it might go really badly wrong. You want to have higher rated guys and then you want to have a guy like this with this kind of situational pass rushing capability where like rated like 40. So the depth chart doesn't think, oh, let's put him in every single moment. But look, this is, yeah, this would be a guy. This would be a guy. If you look at the strength other than uh, greater than or equal 69, and then the technique here, right? If you look at these guys, they're gonna have high line. Let's just do this, keep it simple. So if they're higher than 70 odd, so these are all guys with high and you don't get many, you do get actually do get busts, but he's starting at 71, so he's still talking about high 50s, low 60s, even if it goes wrong, more likely than not. And then the technique. Ah, it comes off. <laughs> you, you can't be sure, but you've got a probability here of like 50% of getting a really good pass rusher, albeit situational. Um, that's probably more valuable than an every down inside linebacker with a probability of it not working out at all, in my view. This is um, this is a positional value debate. I'd probably value Bernard. This guy Campbell we just talked about as you know let's let's do him as a low first. Bernard's a low first. This guy I'm not gonna look at this guy Bromley, but he's gonna be a low first as well. Um a bit younger than Bernard. Um so they're all about the same and, and about as exciting as each other, which admittedly is not that exciting. Um and let's just say that seeing as Oakland needs a linebacker, they're gonna go with Bernard here. Bringing Tennessee onto the board. We've already had a few picks for Tennessee already. And did we take a safety? I can't remember. But let's just double their chances of getting the right guy by doing. Actually, let's just check because I think I, I think I just mocked the safety to them. Um, let's just check. So we said down 16 and Wood 7. 16 was Tennessee. And yeah, okay. So we've, we've just mocked them one already. Uh, and so let's calm down a little bit on sending them every single safety on the board. That's not really very real that a team would actually do that. Um, okay, well, let's let's just simply say there's kind of one... There's a, there's a bunch of defensive guys here, but just as a sort of let's keep it simple and pick a lineman, um, even though it's not a position of need, but on a sort of BPA kind of thing, let's just go here with the centre... Um, which is fair enough. Here's Detroit. Do we know anything about their needs? Uh, yeah, we do. Um, here's Detroit. So Detroit, um, they need to run about. I mean, we have a pick from Detroit already, which is pick 11 and pick 6. Oh, wow, three picks. So pick 11 and pick 6. So what do we give them? We went with... And they've got an inside linebacker, so no more of that stuff. And a, and a flyer at receiver. So Detroit have been pretty unlucky in the, the, the value they're getting here, but they're just going to keep plowing on. They want a defensive back, and <coughs> we can find one of those. Uh, and let's just keep... Um, they can take this guy, Hickman, who's got a, potentially a high rating. But they've really basically gone with three flyers there, and hopefully somebody pans out. Then we got the Giants coming on the clock. This was the result of that trade they traded up to get here. Um, and Minnesota traded, traded out. And this is the value left on the board having done that. Uh, on this analysis, this is who's still on the board. This is what the Giants have traded up to get into, two second round picks. And you've got Cooley with his sort of questionable intelligence. You've got Nikas. Um, why have we not looked at Nikas before? Probably need to. Let's look at Nikas. So let's look at Nikas. So that's from 1976. Is this in Oh, 
Oh, okay. There's a low static, but but really, I probably should have noticed kneecaps quite a long time ago. Kneecaps looks like it's pretty good, even though the the model doesn't like him. Uh, I'm not quite sure I managed to miss kneecaps. Um, it probably should have been mocked a bit higher. Kneecaps uh, looks fine and looks like a player I would take. Uh, in fact, let's just stop a second and have a look at the safeties I've taken off the board already. So we had Hickman, we had Downs, and we had Woods. And it's a bit unfair on Nikas to be the fourth guy off the board in this context. That's a bit unfair. That doesn't really make much sense. But there we go. I did it. Um, that's my mistake. There's the Giants getting Nikas at 22. Uh, it's a bit of value for the trade-up. Um, okay, so what's left? <coughs> Let's take off the board the guys that we've graded away. That seems to be working as a way to do this. Okay, so now we've got, um, on the board we've got Cooley, Campbell, Gokin. Gokin's not really got the pass blocking you need to be a first round pick, so we're going to call him a two. We've got Amber, we talked about Amber. This is Jackson again, they kind of need all sorts of people, and I therefore I think they, could, they, don't, they don't want a situational pass rusher if you're kind of looking to build from scratch. This is what we were talking about before, kind of keep it young. So even though this guy Cooley is sort of a bit debatable on the intelligence, if he looks all right, 19353. Hmm. Oh, we looked, okay, we just, no, 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 not, not, that's a low first round, sorry, we talked about that. Oh, I've gone through that already. Uh, Emerson as a end batch, the size of the tackle, no endurance, no. I mean, we like the other one situation, I guess. It's about the same idea. No, because there's no pass rush. This guy is a okay D tackle with no endurance, so that's not a first round pick either. Um, we got Robinson. Uh, outside linebacker with some statics, a bit of a combine query. Um, sort of all right linebacker, down draft maybe, or a bit lower. This guy's got no, so no, not there. This guy is a flyer at defensive tackle, which isn't that exciting. Quite a good one there. Um, that looks all right. Uh, high percent developed too, so maybe that's the one point nine. This is a low statics cornerback, but with a bit too much age. Let's go for this guy Patton here. I had as a low first, uh, but young uh, can go in at the tackle. Can. Um, and start to build some cohesion. Actually, if you're going to do that, you might as well do it. This guy, Brumley. Um, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, but the trouble is, Brumley on a bad defense is going to get millions and millions of tackles, and by the end of year four, it's going to be so expensive to keep that it's just a really bad player to take in the middle of a rebuild. You just do not want to take this guy early in a rebuild. It just isn't going to work. You're going to end up apportioning so much cap to that player, it's just not going to be helpful at all. Um, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that actually. Um, I really wouldn't. I'd try and fill in the offense first and, and really come back and do the defense later. Um, we've got a fire tight end here. Let's have a look. Uh, no route running, no big play. No, that's not what's going to make the difference for these guys at all. And then you're getting into the players that not really got the ratings to kind of. So this is another tough one for uh, for Jacksonville. Twenty three. There's not really an obvious guy to run a rebuild. Let's so let's come back to what I said before, which is the tack the tackle is probably a sensible place to go, isn't he? Uh, now Los Angeles was that saw yeah saw's back on the clock. Hey saw what's going on? Take the situational pass rush here. This kind of a, a a guess that this could be a cool player to have. Go for that. Um, <coughs> 25, San Francisco. 
Uh, don't know what San Francisco needs. I think we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Just don't know. So let's go with the guard here, top of the board. Right, Seattle. Hey, this is Nick. This is exciting. So Nick wins all the time in this league, as I understand it. Hello, Nick. Um, what would Nick take here? Uh, let's have a look at the board and let's just clear it up a bit. Um, so you've got this guy, Amber, again. You've got a inside linebacker. Is Amber kind of, I can't remember, sorry. Has Amber got like pass rush? No, not really. You got a D tackle, not very interesting. You've got a cornerback. What's this cornerback look like? Let's have a look at this cornerback. 19708. Playoff teams are always going to make an effort to it, even if it's a reach to take a player in a valuable position, even if there's a chance of it not working out. But you get so few looks at players that are valuable positions that even if there's something obviously wrong here, the static's low. You just have to do it sometimes, and that's how it is. And I've done something wrong there, so let's do that again. So look, here we go. So this guy, the out of three, five players, similar players, let's extend it to six. You got one, two, three okay outcomes, two two good outcomes, one okay outcome, and three bad outcomes. Mm. Not great. Not what you want. Not what you think is ideal. But that two out of one in three probability of it really working out. Um, oh no, there's no, there's no management. Okay, no, no, no interception. Okay, no, no, not, not, not quite. It's a bit lower still. Probably don't do that. Um, you're not gonna take uh, this run back. Might you take the safety? Is that a believable thing? Oh, here's one that you might just think about taking. Don't know how Nick's fixed at safety, but this looks like, I mean, this is more upper second round pick value, but you're gonna get a chance of it working out well. You can have an equally a chance of it all going utterly wrong. Yeah, okay, that's the kind of pick you end up with as a, as a, as a perennial playoff team looking to figure out how you take, I mean, it's not, not very exciting. So that's a, that's a player you think about. Maybe you think about Amber too. Let's do Amber. Let's see. Good combines, which is promising. This model doesn't do very well at linebackers. Uh, it really doesn't do very well at linebackers with low statics is why I never take these guys but other people do and they have success model doesn't like Amber at all so no uh, to let him fall a bit down the board um, which means you with two linebackers a tackle or a cornerback a end who's really a tackle uh, not very inspiring safety and I look at all of that and think mm, there's we looked at Sanders with a not very good big player the tight end Let's just do him quickly because that round out with the decision making for this pick. So, oops. So, the guys with big play that's not that great. Like this guy. And there's not really much route running either. So here's one, pretty similar. Went in with the same kind of big play, went with a 40, I mean, it's a blocking tight end, right? You end up with, yeah, I mean, this kind of guy isn't gonna help you win very much. It's kind of gonna block the slot and the roster for someone who might help you win. Even as a playoff contender, I don't think you take that player. Uh, it's not even, you know, down the draft, if you're a playoff team, you just expect to get a kind of okay lineman there's not even one of those in this draft I mean there's quite a few players in the 50s right I mean I, I, I expect to see the player the, the players the GMs in this league that, that are very value conscious looking to trade down in this first round uh, and, and pick up maybe multiple of these guys and see if you can get some value by doing that but I'm not doing trades in this mock draft I'm not going to do that so we're just going to come back to the um, 
I think paradoxically the guy who should pick the linebackers inside they're probably the sort of better teams because um they're gonna they're gonna be better and they're gonna their guys are gonna do less tackling and they're going to not be quite as expensive to take in a second contract and a kind of young one of these. Let's go with Bromley for Seattle here. Uh, and then Buffalo can have a go on that cornerback. And then that brings us to Kansas, who I don't know anything about. Well, let's just give them one of these linebackers. They're almost at the bottom now. And Cincinnati can take the end, who's really a tackle. And Dallas can take, uh, what did we say? The safety is all right. And Cleveland can take, the mighty Cleveland Browns can take um, the 1.9 guy that we've got left on the board. And then that leaves Arizona with this. We're not going to take this guy, Amber. Actually, hang on. I don't think I don't think he should be taken in the first round. So what does that leave us with now? We're left with this board. It doesn't look that bad. Um, this guy Williams five for dash. No pass rush. And you got to. It's just a load of guys that I don't like, really. Uh, all these various guys are second round picks. They've got flaws. What about this guy, Mitchell? Oh, I mean, the trouble is, this guy's going to grade in the 50s and is a sort of okay. Oh, it's 100. Whoa, 100, 100. This guy, should, let's look at this guy. Didn't see that. This guy will commit no penalties for you ever, practically, which is worth a lot when you're trying to win games. and not lose yards okay so let's try this guy <laughs> that's not very good and basically what you're looking for with this guy is if you can get him to be starter caliber then you take him but what this is saying is that the chances of that actually happening are Queryable. This guy's pretty similar. Fifty and fifty. The prospects fifty and seventy. Yeah. Okay. Look, that's a solid second round pick. R. Buckley, but I don't think it's a first round pick. Uh, I don't think it's a first round pick. What about this guy Toma? Who isn't? Is this one with the low endurance again? I don't know. Not much Rundy, but I'm not sure it matters that much. Let's have a look at Toma. Ah, oh, okay. This looks good. Uh, so this guy can... Is it, is it? Oh, okay, this guy's... This guy looks like he could be pretty... Uh, this is, I made a mistake here. This isn't... This isn't I'm going to go back and I'm going to say... I'm going to... I'm going to shift this a little bit. Uh, I think... Uh, no, I'm not. I'm quite bothered. I think that someone will probably take this guy Toma a bit higher up than this, but just to round this out and get through the 30-second pick, let's do that again. Um, there's Toma, pick number 32. There you go. So we've got we've got our picks now, um, and there's a bunch of players that um, others would pick higher and probably will go higher. These guys here, these names like Willis, Raven, Goka, and Sell. Amber, Denny, Emerson, back off some Don Sit Donnelly. I wouldn't be surprised to see some of these guys go in the first round, but I wouldn't pick them and I would do it like this. Here's the draft again. Here's the 32 according to me. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's my mock draft. I'll post this up. Uh, good fun doing this. Let me know what you think. Um, let's see what happens on draft night. Cheers.